Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the reasons why I'm considering getting a vasectomy. Why am I even talking about such a private matter in such a public forum? Shouldn't this be a private matter? Well, stick around and find out why I'm talking about this. This is not a video about antinatalism or the reasons why I don't want to procreate. If you want to see that video, I have that linked below in the description. So here's what's happening. If I don't change my mind about getting a vasectomy by the 1st of July 2021, I am going to book my appointment. I'm making this video partly to make my case for why I'm doing this, but I am genuinely looking for feedback. This title isn't clickbait. If there's something I've missed, then I really want to know. I'm not necessarily looking for reasons why I should have children or why I should procreate. I'm open to hearing those um, and considering your view, um, but I should say I'm quite unlikely to change my mind about that. This is more specifically about why a person who doesn't want kids, a person who doesn't want to procreate, why they should get a vasectomy or should they get a vasectomy or should they not? So the way I see it under the umbrella of scenarios where I don't want children and don't want to procreate in all of those scenarios, I think there are three different scenarios. So first is don't get a vasectomy, just carry on. Second is get a vasectomy, but free some sperm to leave the option of having biological children open. And the third option is to have a vasectomy, but not to freeze any sperm. I'm planning on option three, which is get a vasectomy, don't freeze any sperm. To me, it feels like freezing sperm kind of defeats the point. That gives me the option of changing my mind. Then all it really does is reduce the chance of an accidental pregnancy and make procreating a little bit harder for me. So there is the possibility that I will change my mind about whether procreating is an ethical thing to do or whether it's the right thing for me to do. I'm open-minded, but I find the possibility of me changing my mind about this roughly as likely as I find the possibility of me changing my mind about being vegan, being ethical, or being right for me to do. Reducing the risk of me changing my mind for some biological or selfish reason in the future and reducing the risk of accidental pregnancy seems much more important here. The option of adopting or fostering a child still remains, but I just can't stress enough how much I really don't want to have a child, whether it's biological or not. The opportunity cost of having a child is enormous. An average of $400,000 or more in Australia to raise a child and thousands of hours spent raising that child, those could be put to so much better use than just raising one child, whether it's biological or not. I could donate to effective charities, I could start projects, I could work on volunteering, I could further my career and make just such a massive, such a huge difference compared to the raising of one child. I just want to say that if I could get a surgery to never adopt in the future in the same way that I can get a surgery to never procreate, then I absolutely would. So let's come back to this idea that I might change my mind. This is pretty common, especially for women, when you tell them that you don't want to have a child, they'll usually say, well, you're young and you'll change your mind. I'm not that young, I'm 28, but that really doesn't matter anyway. I might change my mind, but that's the point. I want to lock myself in. I'll come back to that. And here I just want to talk about my rationale for being public about this. I'm making a YouTube video. I see being public about this in the same way as I see being public about other things that I think are really important like donating to charity, like being vegan, being against racism, sexism, etc. Hey, Future Michael here. I'm not saying that racism and sexism are literally the same as procreating. I'm just saying that I think that less racism, less sexism, and less procreation in the world is a good thing. So promoting those social norms is good. That's it. It's important to promote good social norms. And I think the norms of not procreating and getting a vasectomy should be more prevalent in society. And it's also just locking myself in. Some people's first response might be, well, you'll change your mind. What if you change your mind? What are you going to do if you decide you do want to have a child and you've had a vasectomy? That's kind of the point. We as living organisms are evolved to want to procreate. It's wired into us. My biological tendencies could kick in and cause me to change my mind at some point in the future. I might decide I want to have kids for some selfish reason. I want to future-proof myself in the same way that I future-proofed myself from changing behavior when I took a pledge to donate X amount of money per year for the rest of my life. I made that pledge because I am worried that I will change my mind in the future and I want to try and resist that. Now granted a vasectomy is a little bit harder to get around than a public pledge, which I could, I suppose, go back on, but I think that's a good thing because I just really want to lock myself in. That's the point. Let's talk about the actual procedure because I suspect a lot of people don't even really know what a vasectomy does. I certainly didn't until fairly recently. It's a pretty minor surgery to block sperm from reaching the semen that is ejaculated from the penis. 
So a cut is made in the scrotum to either cut the vas deferens or remove a piece of it. That's the tube that carries the sperm to the semen. For all purposes except procreation, the semen still looks and seems the same. There seems to be about a 1-2% to chance of some complication with the procedure, such as bleeding, swelling, or infection. Honestly, that seems like it's worth the risk to me. I should also say that whilst a vasectomy can in some cases technically be reversible, you should treat it as not reversible. There is a chance that you can have another procedure which reconnects the vas deferens, but it's very low success rate and it's not guaranteed, so you should treat it as if it's permanent. Funnily enough, I actually see that as a downside, the fact that you, there is a chance to reverse it. The process of finding a surgeon willing to perform a vasectomy on you in New South Wales actually seems a bit more complicated than the surgery itself. The legal age of a vasectomy is 18, but I've heard mixed stories from males that I know who have gone and tried to get one. Often doctors will be unwilling to operate on someone who hasn't had a child yet. This sounds like discrimination to me, but on some small level I can understand their hesitation even if I don't agree with it. They probably worry that someone will get the vasectomy and then later regret their decision and change their mind. Funnily enough, I accept this possibility and actually I would still get my vasectomy even if I knew for a fact there was a 100% chance of regretting it in the future. If I knew for sure I would regret this decision in the future, I would still get the vasectomy. Again, that's the point as I've explained. I really, really don't want a child. So doctors might ask you to get a note from the GP or a psychologist explaining that you're of sound mind. And this part worries me. I've battled depression in the past and I may battle it again in the future. I don't think that this has anything to do with my desire not to procreate. What actually qualifies as being sound of mind? Once you have this, you might also need to get something written up by a lawyer stating that you absolve the GP the psychologist and or surgeon of all responsibility if you change your mind in the future. Ultimately it may actually come down to me going into state to get my vasectomy done if I go ahead. I know a few people who have had to do that from New South Wales. This seems worth it, if a little frustrating. This summary of some of the potential complications of getting a vasectomy done was taken from Matt Roder's video, uh, which I would highly encourage you to watch if you're considering getting a vasectomy too or just curious about the process. Uh, I'll link that below. Finally, I just want to make a comment on the weirdness of getting a vasectomy. It's certainly not the norm, and lately there has been some negative press about Aussie vegans wanting to get a vasectomy because they've lost their humanity or something. I wish I was making up that headline. This Aussie vegan, myself, wants to get a vasectomy because I hate suffering, and I want there to be less of it. That's it. If you think that means I've lost my humanity, I think that says more about you than it says about me. So thank you for watching. Um, try and change my mind, please, in the comments. Uh, anything I might not have considered, love to hear it from you. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching and have a good day. You've got until the 1st of July.